I'm very excited to have Mark, uh, founder and CEO of Piper, uh, to be here with us today. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Ethan. Um, so I'm particularly excited about Piper because like, I think the first time we met, I just thought, wow, how brilliant. And you can actually get the kids to you know, build this, using this toolbox, build a computer and play Minecraft. How cool is that? Um, but what inspired you to create Piper? Yeah, definitely. It's uh, a long winding road, actually. Um, started off with, with me doing an educational project um, in Africa, in Ghana. And I went over there to teach kids about global health and to compare whether rote memorization based techniques would, would contrast with game based learning techniques. Mm -hmm. And um, I realized that game based education was very powerful in transferring all these really useful life altering skills for kids, mm -hmm. uh, specifically about malaria, diarrheal disease, etc. Um, and while I was there, I realized that there should be a more scalable way to bring this kind of education, not, not only about health, but other skills and tools, whether it's computer science or engineering, to kids all over the world. Mm. Um, so right around that time, this, this microchip called the Raspberry Pi came out on the market, and it was very inexpensive. It was $25. And we thought, wouldn't it be cool to build a whole computer around it and give it to kids as, as a sort of digital Legos, as a physical building, building block set that kids could could build and then use and learn programming on them. Um, and as we were doing that, kids started telling us, we want to play Minecraft, which, which is sort of, you know, and actually a, a digital Legos. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a pixelated world, and kids can go in there and create anything they want right. together or by themselves. And so we, we, we aim to combine the two, the physical assembly, learning about engineering, learning about the fundamentals of, of how a computer works. Uh, with, with the Minecraft gameplay, which kids loved, mm -hmm. and uh, allowing them to learn about you know, how a computer works, and at the same time, uh, engage with it through a game that they already understood, you know, speaking the language that kids, um, the kids already understood, which is Minecraft. And we felt that you know, if, if only such tools existed all around the world, you know, places like, like Ghana, and you know, I'm, I'm originally from Ukraine, places like Ukraine, um, if, there was a way to inspire kids in those countries to see themselves as creators and inventors with technology. I believe those, a lot of those places would, uh, would have a lot more technological innovation, a lot more great, great things would come out of, of those places because um, I think a big part of uh, what stops people is, is the lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. And that, that starts at a young age. So, so our aim with Piper is, is to create a product that inspires confidence mm -hmm. um, in, in kids and and you know, eventually adults as well yeah. around technology. Yep, I, I think like you know, as Asian, I completely agree with so many things because I think education sometimes is all around tests and you know, certification is really not about true learning. Mm. Um, so, so tell us about, so you mentioned Minecraft is all about, as you said, digital Lego, right? And Piper is all about physical and actually you use your hand to build all these things. So how, how, how does it work? So if I buy this for my, my, my little niece today, um, I buy the kid, and then what? What do sure. kids do with it? Yeah, well, the, the first thing is kids actually assemble the computer themselves using uh, a real-life engineering blueprint that they get. Um, they put the pieces together. They take about two hours to actually build their own computer that has you know, a microchip and a battery and a screen. And from there, they turn it on, and the computer comes to life. And on the screen is, is a Minecraft world that they're familiar with that actually leads them into tutorials around how to build more electronics and more gadgets mm -hmm. on this computer they just assembled. Um, and from there, you know, they eventually get into programming. So we want to take kids from the very basics of you know, knowing nothing about computing or engineering or programming and get them to, to a point where they feel comfortable and confident with, with this technology, mm -hmm. feel like they could create anything they want from scratch. So how many kids have played with uh, Piper so far? Yeah, I mean, at this point, we've we've shipped over uh, over four thousand units of product um, mm -hmm. all over the world. I think over over thirty countries have Piper, and we've done all kinds of demo sessions as well in museums and schools. And I think that number is probably in the tens of thousands. So probably tens of thousands of kids at this point have experienced Piper in some way. Right. So when you say, say kids, like how old are we talking about? Seven to thirteen. Okay. And then beyond thirteen, then then what? Well, so we're, we're, we're building out Piper to be um, an ecosystem of products that kind of capture kids all along the spectrum. Right now, it's, it's focused 
to a certain particular age range. But moving forward, as we introduce more complicated uh, pieces of content, as well as uh, programming, real life, you know, textual based programming, um, we hope to capture more of that age range. You know, and part of that is uh, we're going to schools. You know, a big, a big um, part, a big important piece of Piper for us is, is getting getting experience in the hands of as many kids as possible all over the world. Mm -hmm. And part of that, part of the strategy is going into schools where lots of kids can have hands-on experience with it. So um, we're developing curriculum and we're currently in over 30 schools, mostly here in California, but also around the world, um, and learning centers in China and Hong Kong, where um, a lot of that curriculum is focused on, on textual programming. Mm -hmm. So that, that allows for kids older than 13 to continue playing with the product. So, so you mentioned China, I, I think is a super exciting uh, market. I think just kids alone, uh, probably bigger than the population of the US, that's crazy. Um, at, so what do you think about China market, like being so far away? We obviously hear all these not so positive news with like Google and Uber. So you know, how do you actually grow in China and what do you think about the market? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think a big important part of um, of understanding Chinese market is understanding how their education system is currently structured. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of that is focused on rote memorization, exams, testing, yep. um, very, very in some ways cutthroat environment where uh, it's very difficult to get into the top schools and it's you know oftentimes one single test that determines whether a student gets into university of choice. So you know that training starts from the very beginning. From elementary school parents are pushing their kids to, to memorize and learn and get the best grades. And I think that it creates an environment where, where kids aren't necessarily um, you know, inspired or motivated to be creative. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the problems you know, that we're, we're facing just, just in, in the world in general require us to think outside the box, to have creativity. Mm -hmm. you know, getting getting the, right, the right grades or, or getting the right answer, that, 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 that's important, but that's not, that's not the whole picture. Mm -hmm. And so you know, in China, we see a lot of the focus, because it's so, it's so focused on rote memorization, um, parents are realizing, you know, their kids are losing out. So, so we see Piper as, as, as a product that, you know, actually encourages creativity and something that we feel Chinese consumers, as they begin to understand the importance of creativity, begin to gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. um, so, so one part of that strategy is, like I said, learning centers. Mm -hmm. So we're currently in a couple of learning centers um, in Hong Kong and, and in, in mainland China, where, um, you know, after school, kids can go to these learning centers um, take a class, a uh, curated experience where they, they build the computer, they go through the curriculum that we provide, mm -hmm. and ideally understand, um, you know, not just, not just the, the, the getting the right answer is important, but also kind of understanding how something works and how yep. they can build on that. Yep, yep. And uh, I actually read somewhere last year, uh, 2015, the Chinese government spent $240 billion uh, in compulsory education. Uh, which is crazy. So I definitely think that there's a lot of opportunity, particularly like for you in learning centers mm -hmm. uh, all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we touch on China and like how Piper work, and you know, really Piper is built on an education sort of concept like STEM, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Obama last year from sort of made the announcement and commitment that they will want to put like 240 million. Um, to support STEM education. Mm -hmm. So you know, Piper sounds like it's a great starting point uh, for seven to 13. Um, beyond that, like are you thinking about more toolkits but based on different games? Mm -hmm. Or are you thinking about like beyond the toolkits that's more going to build on the sort of the mine Minecraft concept? Like what do you, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean a big, a big push right now, like, like you were mentioning, is, is STEM education. Um, big grants from federal government around computer science for all. Um, I think are being released this year, and that's getting close to a billion dollars, or like four billion, some really large number of funding is being allocated for computer science being taught to school-age children. Um, and on top of that, there's also the whole idea of the maker movement and maker spaces. And so we see Piper as sort of positioned right, right kind of smack dab in the middle of, of both of those um, themes and spheres. Um, you know, we, we see Piper first as a, as a maker, as a maker box. You can get a whole uh, maker space in, in your classroom with just a Piper kit, you know, mm -hmm. because there's, there's the wood, uh, there's laser cut wood, there's the electronics, there's the programming, and there's some design elements as well to kind of touch upon every single piece of making that lets kids understand, you know, the basic tools, whether it's laser cutting or, or CAD or 3D design mm -hmm. or electro electronics or programming. They can understand all that just through 
playing with Piper and getting that initial experience. Right. And then beyond that, um, you know, as, as I was saying, we're heavily focusing on programming and teaching programming um, through a very intuitive way. So currently, that, that is through Minecraft. Um, moving forward, we'll, we're going to expand beyond, beyond just Minecraft into other, into other uh, modes of teaching, right? And then, and then that's going to be it's going to be determined by what kids what kids want. You know, mm -hmm. kids told us in the beginning they love playing Minecraft. So, you know, if at some point kids are interested in, um, you know, hacking hacking their Twitter account, or may, maybe mm -hmm. maybe not something so, so 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 malicious, but but <laughs> doing something that's actually relevant to them, yeah. uh, maybe taking photos in an interesting way, right? Something that involves hardware and, and software. Um, we're going to continue listening to what our users, the kids are saying what, they, what they're interested in, and continue pushing product in that, in that direction. Right. I, I can totally see you create something sort of, in terms of programming, like front end, back end, like design, um, maybe like AI, voice, mm. um, and maybe even like get a bigger version of Piper. You can build robots or something. That would be yeah. super fun. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's um, all, all those aspects are definitely areas where we can go, right? Currently, we have the, the base, which is, which is the computer kit. And so from there, um, the area for expansion is, is infinite. Mm -hmm. um, you can create, like you said, robots. You can actually do programming that, that's focused on the web. Um, you can create IoT devices mm -hmm. for your home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, eventually, you know, lots of different ideas that we have. You know, one of them is VR. You can create your own VR system. And you know, VR and also AR, um, you know, virtual reality, and, Augmented reality, they're both great because they allow you to experience the world in, in a new way without necessarily having to, to go to a different place or to have all the equipment you need. You could, you could have a, you know, virtual circuits or you can have virtual um, uh, you know, f physical devices and gadgets right. in VR without necessarily having to, to have all that physically in front of you. There's a lot of opportunities. Um, that we see for the next couple of years. So at the same time, being devil advocate, um, you are not the only one, right, um, in terms of sort of helping STEM education for kids in the U.S. So what do you think, like how do you win? Like, what, what sets you apart from all the other players in the, on the market? Absolutely, yeah, I mean our team is very, uh, very experienced in, in education. Um, you know, I did a whole bunch of different education projects during my time at Princeton and Oxford, and my co-founder, he was um, a fellow in the Stanford Design School, so he did his PhD on, on learning tools for kids. So we have a whole pedagogy around how do we educate children, and not necessarily children, but also novices, mm -hmm. anyone who's new to the area around electronics, computing, programming. Um, and based on the, we, we did, you know, a lot, a lot of Joel's work was, was uh, you know, peer-reviewed studies and findings. So, so we, we're, we're basing our product design and development around things that actually work and are proven to work. So, so having that, um, you know, that credibility and that intense uh, you know, evidence-based approach, I think, is, is, is one of the things that will set us apart. Mm -hmm. Beyond just being you know, really user-focused, beyond just having uh, you know, an understanding of what, what will get kids to engage and learn the best, we also, every single, every single week, we're talking to kids. We're asking them, you know, what do you like, what do you not like? Constantly getting feedback, both from kids and parents, to understand what is it that's working, what is it that's not working for them. Mm -hmm. so I think those two big things are the big things, though. Mm -hmm. I, out of curiosity, um, do kids do kids actually come back and play with Piper every day? Like, how do you like all the kids that I know? Uh, super short attention span, right? So obviously, it's so so exciting to build it. You know, in the first couple hours, and then after that, I play with it. Great, but they also going to, you know, they often get sick of all the toys that they have. Yeah. So how do you actually make sure, like from a Piper point of view, keep them to come, keep coming back? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, well, that's, what, I mean, on, on on the immediate, like, how do you keep kids coming back? That that point is addressed really great, really really well through Minecraft. We just happen to uh, be using a game that kids already spend hours and hours playing. Mm -hmm. Watching, watching on YouTube, and just engaging with, um, whether by themselves or with their friends. So, you know, in terms of engagement, we don't have you know any problems with that. Kids, kids already love Minecraft. Um, it's it's more the other way. It's more that parents always try to limit how much time they spend on the game. Mm -hmm. But but more generally, I think you know the goal the goal of Piper is to be uh, you know a toolbox and a tool set and just an ecosystem of products that kids can always 
go to and go back to if they want to make something. So the initial idea is to introduce kids to programming, electronics, computing, in a way that they understand, in a way that they find appealing and interesting. And then from there, you know, if they want to make something, if they have an idea for a toy they want to make, they, they understand, oh, you know, actually, I can 3D print something from Piper, and then I can add some electronics from Piper, and I can actually program those things, I can make my own toy mm -hmm. that, that is responsive, that has LED lights and has sensors. Right. Right? The, the idea is to give kids those tools so that they, when they want to make something or they want to create or share something, they, they find that to be very easy to do. Right, right. Um, yeah, thank you, Mark, for taking the time to you know, explain Piper with us today. Thanks. Thank you.